I'm Ray Poor. I've been at St. Paul since uh, 1968 and have known the Reynolds for years and years. So tonight we've been talking to Carter and Marilyn Reynolds about their many years at St. Paul and their great experiences. I'm Betty Jo Four, and I also have been at St. Paul since 1968 and have really enjoyed uh, knowing and being with the Reynolds. So this has been an opportunity to interview them. I'm Marilyn Neblett Reynolds, and I was, uh, have been in St. Paul since 1927. My name is Carter Reynolds, and I've been, I was born into the church in 1926. However, I haven't uh, gone here all that time. We lived in Maine for two years and in Houston, Texas for 15. But other than that, we've been here all that time. So as you were growing up then, as children in the church, yes, is, is that how your faith was developed um, with the church and with home? Well, so it's about we walked it. to church. Yeah, we walked to church. I lived on Rutherford. He lived on Deer Park. Deer Park. Mm -hmm. We all walked together on Sunday morning, and that's quite a little walk. Well, for her, it's not very far. For uh -huh. our house, it's about a mile. Okay. Okay. So, in the church, then, you were developing faith and spiritually with activities and well we uh, the church was a good place to have a lot of activities we used to roller skate down in the social hall well, of course there wasn't any rug there then so now you walk in the social hall yeah. now we walk in the Two social miles hall a day. <laughs> and then later on came the boy scouts and after we, that we had bible bible study bible yeah. school uh, there was an, oh yeah, MYF. the MYF was good because MYF was there really wasn't any good. television back in those days to speak of. <clears throat> so they had a Girl Scouts, I big Girl time Scouts. on Sunday night. So this was not just your spiritual home, but your social home also. That's right. It was, that's, that's was, it was the only social home we had. That's, about. Yeah. The thing of it is, whenever we go to any place, We've, Carter has worked all over the world, and I go with him as much, much as I can. And we always go to a church and find our friends. That's where we find our mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. So who do you think were some of the people, uh, I assume your parents were very influential in your spiritual development. Uh, are there others that you would uh, mention? Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Fowler was. She was a nursery school or kindergarten, kindergarten age teacher. children. And and um, let's see. Mr. Grubbs. Oh yeah, Mr. Grubbs. Um, L O A. So were you in class with him mm -hmm. in the L O A? Mm -hmm. Well, and not till after we got married. Uh, we weren't old enough to be in the LOA till after we were married. Uh -huh. When we'd come back from Houston the first time, mm -hmm. that was 1951. <clears throat> Mrs. Overstreet. Mm-hmm. Uh, see what. Now, did she teach or? Uh, no, she, she kept she order. <laughs> she kept <laughs> order. <laughs> yeah, when we were when we were roller skating down there, there were always four mothers there. Two of them were in the back making hot chocolate and stuff, and two mothers were out there making sure the boys didn't hassle the girls too much. There's another couple, Mr. and Mrs. Detchen. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I don't know. If, if you probably never don't remember, do you? Yeah. yeah. You knew them? Uh-huh. Okay. They were good with me. All right. Well, Dr. Olds, the preachers. Well, McAdams and... Hightower. Yeah, both of them. Our daughter particularly liked Hightower. Of course, she was little then, and they had this Christmas program where you brought your own Christmas, toy. Christmas Day. Your favorite you toy. You went to church. Yes. On Christmas yes. Day. <clears throat> and, um, the, and he'd pick each child up, and, and, and they'd bring their special toy, one, uh -huh. toy, uh -huh. one toy that they liked. Right. 
Well, that was that was. So special. he would do it with each individual each child. child. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are the some other high points of St. Paul's ministry that you've participated in or you've seen over the several years you've been here? Back in the late 70s and early 80s, I guess it was, they had these 12 groups. And the people that uh, we were in the group with were still friends with, but they, that was uh, kind of special. And, uh, we called it the 12, just the 12 disciples. You know? uh -huh. So would you say that group in particular uh, had a great deal of influence on your uh, faith journey? Yeah. Mm, absolutely. And of course, all through this time, there's just the friends that we've, like those are friends now too. The friends that we met, <clears throat> and when when we had deaths in the family, our mm -hmm. friends were there. Right. <clears throat> it celebrated our special things. The thing about St. Paul is <clears throat> they serve the area. They have um, AA and they have uh, well, they do a lot of things. Seniors. Yeah. <clears throat> they have the daycare and all the good things. And if they didn't use the building, it would be empty. Mm -hmm. This is home. We're here every day. <laughs> <laughs> Any any time we can help, we'll be glad to.